Do I watch Rose and Rosie on YouTube? No, I don't know who that is. Hello, we're back. We're back. We're back better than ever. We are back. We're back. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened with that there. We might have lost some people in the way. I'll wait for a minute. Better? Okay, good. Like, it's always the minute I decide to go on live that my YouTube is just fucked. Love that. Uh, okay. <laughs> New hair is absolute chef's kiss. Um, it's really not. I mean, I tried my best. You know, I was doing six colors in an ombre. I missed some spots. Like, what is this? You know, is it even? Fuck no. But like, you know. Hey. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be, it all comes out in the wash anyway. Uh, listen, I haven't actually shampooed it yet because you're not supposed to. Um, yeah, I did it myself. <laughs> It's, this side looks good. This side has issues. Um, but you know, we, tr we tried our best. Is the back good? Yeah. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably not. <laughs> Whatever. Can't see the back of my own head anyway. Um, all right, so this uh, live stream is going to be my unboxing of 30 books that I hauled from Book Outlet. Um, I made a joke in my last stream, which cleverly died, that uh, I have 30 books in this heavy box. Uh, so heavy. Look at this. It's a 50 pound warning. Don't hurt your back, kids. Don't do it. Lift carefully. Heavy. Heavy Lord. It's a heavy Lord. Okay, so. <laughs> anyway. We talked about one book so far before my stream died. So let's talk about it. Uh, the first book we have here. Also, actually, I talked a little bit about it. This is going to be a repeat for anybody who's already been here. But, um, no, three of them came in a different box. And then, yes. Yeah. They managed to stick 23 books in this box. Listen, book outlet. <laughs> Man, I'll hand it to him. It's pretty impressive. Um, I'm not a book outlet blogger friend as much as uh, everyone should treat them that I should be. Um, it's fine. I'm not mad about it, but whatever. <laughs> I'm joking. But... Um, Oh, trust me, I tried to lift it off of my front step and I was like, um, excuse me? Gravity? <laughs> Rude? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, have a good day at work. Um, yeah, so I did want to update you guys if uh, you're new here. I am leaving for Hawaii in five days. Uh, fuck. <laughs> And then I'll be gone for two weeks. So I will be back in the new year with videos. Excuse me. I'm taking a break. So this is going to stay up on my channel. And I'm going to uh, unbox these books. So the first book is Famous in a Small Town and uh, by Emma Mills. And I've read most Emma Mills. Like I've read, yes, I've read all three of these. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm positive that this book has purple hair dye on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, love that for her. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this is about a small town, a group of friends, and they're trying to save their marching band festival or something. I don't know. Anyway, that is book number one. I don't know where I'm going to put any of these. We can talk about Hawaii as we go. Uh... Oh yeah, under the cover. Okay. 
That's right. A lot of these are hardback, so we'll show under the cover. Um, this is what it looks like. Ah. And then it kind of has like little sparkles in it. Ah, it's cute. It's almost like terrazzo, if you will. Cute. Um, apparently this one is not that good, but I'll be the judge of that. So fantastic. Uh, up next we have, up next we have Down and Across by Arvin Armadi. Armadi. This book has the pleasure of having pink hair dye on it. <laughs> that's just how that's just how it works apparently um i was interested in this a long time ago but where i forget what it's about so let's find out shall we it says scott fredowski has a track record track record of quitting his best friends know exactly what they want to do for the rest of their lives but scott can hardly commit to a breakfast cereal let alone a passion same with college applications looming and his parents pushing him to settle on a practical career, Scott sneaks off to Washington, D.C., seeking guidance from a famous psychologist who claims to know the secret to success. He never expects an adventure to unfold. I think it's because it kind of sets up as like, um, and then I'm not going to, I'm not going to read the rest of them. And apparently they do crosswords or something. <laughs> so, but I think this one was highly praised by... Mark Ashiro, I think. The inside cover looks like this, which is really cute. I like it when books read like that on the spine. So that's what that looks like. Cute. Love your hair. My job made me get rid of my pink hair. That's lame. Oh no, buffers. Are we good? Is the stream alive? I can't wait to get my nails on, by the way. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna get talons on that are gonna be like neon yellow, so that when I put them near my hair, it's, good. it's gonna be good. I have outfits planned. I am bringing 36 rolls of film for 14 days. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, up next, a book I know nothing about other than um, I picked it up on Book Outlet. You know, that happens sometimes. I don't know a lot of the times what a book is about. I just saw it and it looked pretty. Um, this is Severance by Ling Ma. And I don't know what this is about. I just thought it was pretty. So let's find out. Candice Chen, a newly minted New Yorker, first generation American, recent orphan, millennial worker bee. Love is going to work. She likes the routine, the an anonymity of the city. She likes coordinating, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to give you guys too much. So Candace barely notices when Shen fever sweeps New York. Families flee, companies seize operation, the subway squeaks to a halt. Persuaded by a big payout to be a one-person skeleton crew at the office, she spends her free time photogra photographing the abandoned city as an anonymous blogger. So... I think it's like a maybe modern-day apocalyptic something or other. I don't know. Has anyone heard of this? Has anyone read this? I don't know. Thought it was pretty. Seems interesting. No? See, that's the thing. I just find these books randomly and, like, I don't know. I, I really feel like I should do a video on books that I just picked that sound weird. It does sound promising. Oh, I will be blogging my trip, yes. Um, we're Like I said, we're gone for Cindy has a review of it. Sick. Hopefully it's good. Um, yeah, we're gone for 14 days, so we're doing a bunch of stuff. So we're doing a catamaran boat, boat tour out on the Nepali coast. We're going to Kauai, by the way. Um, then we're doing a helicopter tour up and over the Nepali coast. Um, we're doing ATVing through the forest a forest, jungle. Um, <laughs> what else are we doing? 
uh, we're doing like an inner tube thing through like an old sugar plantation. That should be cool. We might do a rum safari where we drink rum and go on a safari. And what else? Oh, and we're doing like a luau. So we're doing a bunch of stuff. And then we're staying like five minutes from the beach. So it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, okay. Next book. Next book. Okay, I've heard this isn't good, but I've wanted it. So like also suck it. Oh, also, I'm just showing sure what this looks like. Oh, it's kind of just... I wasn't expecting it to just be... If anything, I'm expecting it to be pink. But... Hi, Celeste Toria. All right, next book. Lizzie. I heard about this book a long time ago, and I think it was on a most anticipated list that I did at one point. Um, this is, <laughs> I think, a YA book about Lizzie Borden, which could not be more up my alley, but it might be really bad. So, I mean, it might be great. <laughs> it says she's burying the hatchet once and for all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so it says 17-year-old Lizzie Borden has never been kissed. Polite but painfully shy, Lizzie prefers to stay in the kitchen where she can dream of becoming a chef and escaping her reality. With tyranni tyrannical, tyrannical, there's a word I can't say, <laughs> Ty tyrannical parents who force her to work at the family's bed and breakfast and her blackout episodes, oh no, a symptom of a medical condition that has plagued her, plagued her since her first menstrual cycle, Lizzie longs for a life of freedom, time and space to just figure out who she is and who she wants, what she wants. Oh, this is by Dawn Uist. I don't uh, know. No idea. Oh, here we go. Enter the effervescent, unpredictable Bridget Sullivan. Bridget has joined the B&B &B staff as the new maid, and Lizzie is insanely, sorry, instantly drawn to her artistic style and free spirit. Even her Star Wars obsession... is kind of cute. The two of them forge a bond that quickly turns into something that's maybe more than friendship. But when her parents try to restrain Liz <laughs> Lizzie <laughs> from living the life she wants, something sparks in her that she can't quite figure out. Her blackout episodes start getting worse. Her instincts less and less reliable, as is my speech. <laughs> Lizzie is angry, certainly, but she also feels like she's going mad. From acclaimed author, Don Iris, come to edge of your seat, reimagining of one of the most chilling mysteries in modern history. Oh, shit! Oh, well, I opened it to people being hatcheted, so. I did not know that this was a modern retelling of Lizzie Borden. Color me intrigued. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2020 is going to be an interesting year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Anyone read that? <laughs> read it as a horror comedy? Probably. Probably. All right. Next book here. Um, this is I Stop Somewhere by. T.E. Carter, and from what I understand, this is about sexual assault, I think. Um, it says, Ellie Freyas, Freyas, Frey, 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 I don't know how to spell that. Frias, sure. Disappeared long before she vanished. Tormented through middle school, Ellie begins her freshman year with a new look. She doesn't need to be popular, she just needs to blend in with the wallpaper. But then the unthinkable happens. Uh, some assault. So I'm not going to read that because that might be upsetting. The problem is no one is searching for a girl they never noticed in the first place. So that's heartbreaking. Um, it says T.E. Carter's stirring and visual debut is not, not only discusses and dismantles rape culture, but also reminds us what it is to be human. So I think I saw Kayla read this one and it was like incredibly hard hitting. So um, again, this is in stuff that's been in my book outlet, uh, cart for like a year. Has anyone read this? 
by the way, all my books from Book Outlet are like in fantastic condition, I would like to say. So seriously, Book Outlet did a good job this time. Never heard of her until now? Me neither. Me either. You guys doing over okay, do okay over there? Is my internet it's just shit? Have have it read it sounds heavy. It definitely, definitely sounds heavy. Yeah, I know it does. Like big time. I popped a Twitter for a hot second. Okay. It's all good, it's all good. Perfect. Perfect. It happened once, so now I'm like paranoid about it, you know? All right, next book here, Chelsea will be happy I picked this up. This is Everything All at Once by Katrina Katrina Leno. Um, yeah, can't wait for this. I uh, loved, uh, oh my God, Katrina Leno's other book. What's it called? You know, that one. It says, Lottie Reavers is not a risk taker. She plays it safe and avoids all the ways she might get hurt. But when her beloved aunt Helen dies of cancer, Lottie's fear about life and death starts spiraling out of control. Aunt Helen wasn't a typical aunt. She was the author of best-selling, author of the best-selling Alvin Hatter series about siblings who, who discover an elixir of immortality. So basically, Aunt Helen is J.K. Rowling. It's a series of letters, each containing mysterious instructions that are, suppo are supposed to get Lottie to take a leap and for once in her life really live. Love that. Love that. Somersault. Oh, mwah. Somersault. Mwah, mwah. Fantastic book. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Any special things you really want for Christmas this year? We're not doing Christmas this year. I hate Christmas. And so uh, this year I got a fucking break, which is the best. <laughs> so I'm going to Hawaii. All I want for Christmas this year is to uh, get really drunk. So things crossed. <laughs> um, have you read R You, the one that's on Netflix? No, but I watched everything up until the last episode. And then I watched the last episode myself without Jeff. So I know how it ended. Yeah. Hey, anyway, oh yeah. So this is what this looks like. Very cute. I like that font. If anyone knows what that font is, can you let me know? I know there's some people out there who are really into fonts. These Helvetica hoochies ain't really bold, you know. Sounds like the perfect Christmas. Oh, it's so good. It's going to be so good. It looks like the font on I wish you all the best. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Well, I like that font. That is really, yeah. I'm gonna do a season two of you on Netflix. You know? Um, I read 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl and it was um, upsetting. Not what, not what I thought it was. I can tell you that. Yeah, I like this lyric. Bitches be feeling themselves on the net. These Helvetica hoochies ain't really bold. Remarkable, <laughs> I bring out anger in bitches that don't even know how. Ooh. Good stuff. Okay, next book. Um, all right, this is one that I don't know if I'm gonna like, but like also um, I love Jason Siegel. So um, I got Otherworld <laughs> by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller. And uh, I believe this is a YA sci-fi. It says, welcome to Otherworld, step into the future, leave your body behind. Simon's life took a turn for worse when his best friend Kat stopped talking to him. The bottom fell out 
when an accident on a late night party landed her in intensive care unconscious and barely hanging on. Enter Otherworld, a full body gaming immersion Blah, 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 blah. a full body gaming immersion experience. There are no screens, there are no controls. It's a new reality. And if Simon can get his hands on it, he might be able to use it to communicate with Kat and maybe even save her. Or it might be the end of them both forever. We're gonna find out. But uh, is this the first one? I hope so. Cause I know there's two. Oh yeah, okay. Don't miss the sequel. There's a sequel. Oh, Jason Segel is and ha was, has always been on my top five. Um, currently, my top five, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd, Jason Segel, Paul Rudd and Jason Segel, because they're friends, I believe that it could happen where both are, both of them are there, um, which is mwah, ideal. Um, and uh, yeah, really only those two men right now. Bill Skarsgård, Bill Skarsgård, Bill Skarsgård's there. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's there when he's not being problematic, which I'm just going to revert my brain back to unproblematic Jeff Goldblum and then we're fine. <laughs> so, yeah. You enjoyed Otherworld? Mm, fantastic. Love that. Love that for me. That's another book I got. Um, Another book that I picked up. Hold on. Someone text me. She said, oh, oh, much better. Thank you. <laughs> yes, my hair looks much better. <laughs> um, I picked this book up, and little did I know that it is the third installment of a series. Love that. Love it when that happens. Um, I picked this up on the cover alone. It's uh, What the Hell Did I Just Read by David Wong. <laughs> and it turns out that uh, from the New York Times bestselling author of John Died at the End, and this book is full of spiders, comes the third installment of this equally horrific and hilarious series. John Dies at the End is worth the read. Perfect. Okay, I love this. I love this. I love doing book hauls with people here. <laughs> okay, so I do. Okay. Um, I don't I don't think I want to read the back of this then because I don't know if it's going to give spoilers. I don't know. It seems really weird and twisty and strange. That's what I'm hoping. It's a bit nutty and disjointed, but it's real nonsensical nonsense. That's exactly what I want. It's more of an experience. Oh, I hauled experience books. <laughs> I hauled truly experience books later on in this haul. So that's going to be great. Okay. I'm stoked about that. Imaginary Friends by Stephen Shabosky is one to read. I have the arc of that and I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> but. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Hold on. I did not know that. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, the next one I picked up is Feral Youth by Sean David Hutchinson and other people. I did not know that it was also other people. Um, it's so good. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says a novel in 10 points of view from Sean David Hutchinson and nine other powerhouse authors. I didn't know there was other powerhouse, powerhouse authors. Okay. So from what I understand, this is teens. If the text is confusing, the audiobook is fun. Okay. I'll take note of that. It says, this is an outdoor education program designed to teach troubled youth the value of hard work, cooperation, and compassion. Ten teens are left alone in the wild. And then each character, I imagine, is written by a different author. Ooh. Okay, that sounds fun. It may be dark. I like it. Side note, your hair reminds me of the cover of Girls of Paper and Fire. Yeah, probably. 
I am married. I took my wedding ring off earlier so I could dye my hair. <laughs> but yeah, I'm married. To my husband who just shaved his face this morning and he looks like a different person. <laughs> um, next book. <laughs> next book is one by Josh Mallerman and that's Unburied Carol. And it says, this is so fun. I, I love this. Um, it says, Carol Evers is a woman with a dark secret. She has died many times, but her many deaths are not final. There are comas, a waking slumber indistinguishable from death. Only two people know of Carol's eerie condition. One is her husband, Dwight, who married Carol for her fortune and plots to seize it by proclaiming her dead and quickly burying her alive. The other is her lost love, the infamous outlaw James Moxie. When word of Carol's dreadful fate reaches him, Moxie rides the trail again to save his beloved from an early grave. All the while, awake and aware, Carol fights to free herself from the crippling darkness that binds her, summoning her own fierce will to survive. Love it. Love it. Yeah, he shaved his beard. I love books in the freezer. Can you, rec can you recommend another podcast? Another book podcast? No, because that's really the one that I listen to. But um, My Favorite Murder is the one that I can continue to listen to. And then right now, if you like true crime, but find it like really, truly horrifying um, because it's unsolved cases or cases that are currently open, um, Jensen and Hull's The Murder Squad is um, really something. Yeah, this sounds like a mess. Ooh. Listen, I really like the when books have this going on. Title card things. That's good stuff. And this one says Clyde in the Grave Diggers. Dun dun dun. Chick. Love it. Love the bird box. Yeah, me too. Okay, I'm gonna put some more books up on my table here. <laughs> Have I ever read any of the Vampire Chronicles? No. I loved Bird Box. Um, I'll be honest, I think I like the, I don't know if I like the movie better than the book. I just feel like the book read like a movie, so it like lended itself well to being adapted. All right, I have a half a dozen more books up here. All right, let's 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 get through it. We have so many more books to talk about. Okay. Um, another one that is a random weird book. Oh, I am reconnecting. Is my connection okay? Am I back now? Are we reconnected? You know, YouTube, if you could not, that'd be great. Okay, well, I read a lot of books that are um, really mixed media like that. So, I know nothing about the Vampire Chronicles. Also, look at these sunglasses I got for Hawaii. Are they horrific? Are they really bad? <laughs> they're kind of, they're kind of dumb. And I got these ones. Oh, that looks sick with my hair, though. Yes. <laughs> Hi, bleach. Oh, I love bleach. Yeah, that's literally the color that I'm gonna I'm gonna do with my nails. Is like this exact color. We good. We know. We Gucci. And I got these ones. Okay, cool. Um, I have not read Taryn Fisher's books. 
I'm not. Okay, we're back. Apparently, we're, we're good. Um, so yeah, this is another random book that I just picked up on an absolute whim. And I think it sounds really interesting. So this is The Bus on Thursday. That, that cover, though, it got me. So it says, it wasn't just the bad breakup that turned Eleanor Mel Mellet's life upside down. It was the cancer and the demons that came with it. One day she felt a bit of a bump and she was scratching her armpit at work. Next thing you know, she was rendered breastless by an inappropriately attractive doctor and plagued by her judgy support groups, pity cupcakes, and her mom knitting sad sweaters. Humiliated and infuriated, Eleanor retreats to Talbingo, a remote little Australian town looking for a primary school teacher. The Mrs. Barker up and vanished there, Miss Barker up and vanished in the night, despite otherwise being the most perfect teacher ever, apparently. Tabingo is a quiet blah, blah, blah. Okay, hold on. But the townspeople are unnervingly odd, and that's what got me. It says, odd. The bus is amazing. Someone else has heard about this book. Mm, love it. Okay, fantastic. Uh, but the townspeople are unnervingly odd, and there's that drunk friar who keeps offering to exercise her cancer demon, and she can't figure out why there are so many locks on her front door, and who keeps knocking on it late at night. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Sounds horror, horror-ish. And, uh, I'm really happy someone else said that it's amazing, because I have never heard anything about this book. Picked it up on a whim. Um... And I love it. I already love it. I already love it before I read it. You guys ever get books like that? You're like, I could, couldn't care less about what it actually, <laughs> but I love it. All right. All right, next book is, I think Julie told me to read this. I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Hello. Yeah, the aesthetics go. Hello, lovely. Um, okay, so next book is Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. And it says, Kiko Hamura has always had a hard time saying exactly what she's thinking. With a mother who makes her feel unremarkably and unremarkable and a half Japanese heritage she doesn't quite understand, Kiko prefers to keep her head down, certain that, certain that once she makes it into her dream art school, her real life will begin. But when Kiko doesn't get into prison, at the same time, her abusive uncle moves back in with her family. Love that. Great. So when she received an invitation from her childhood friend to leave her small town and her art schools on the West Coast, Kiko jumps at the opportunity in spite of the anxieties and fears that attempt to hold her back. Hello, y'all. Ah, uh, doopy doopy doop. A story of identity, family, beauty. Love it. Okay, I wanted to do Peach for Hawaii, and then last minute I panicked and I did this. Which I think is more fun. But was also an absolute fucking nightmare to do, so. <laughs> Starfish was so good. Perfect. I love that. Very hard hitting. Hard hitting road trippy kind of thing because that sounds, excuse me, that sounds up my alley. Love it. All right. Your hair is boss. Thank you. All right. Next book that I grabbed um, an absolute one that I've been meaning to get forever, and I'm so happy Book Outlet had it. Still. Fire, you'll match the sunset. That was my attempt to do sunset hair. I, I need to touch up different parts. Like I wanna add, well you guys can see. <laughs> Maybe you can't. I wanna add a little bit more pink like right here. But audio is doing some nonsense, is it? Is it because my cell phone was too close? Um, anyway, next book that I hauled is uh, Girls on the Verge by Sharon Biggs Waller. Wow, you really can't read that, by the way. 
And this is about girls going on a trip to get an abortion and all of that stuff. So, and then that's what that cover looks like, which I really like. It's kind of like a pale pink. It's kind of neat. It's also not a very long book. I thought it would be longer than that, but I know people have read this, I believe. Audio is doing some nonsense. Are we okay? Are we all right? Remember it being quick? Okay. Yeah, it's shorter. It's definitely a shorter one, so. All right, next book. Oh my God, I have so many books here. Like this would have been such a friggin' long video. It's kind of doing this warbly thing. Uh, I don't know. That's weird, I don't know what's going on. I think it's just because my internet sucks. Well, hopefully you guys can see me fine. Um, next book that I have here is Love From A to Z by S.K. Ali, who I met, I think. Did I meet her? Yeah, I think I did. Um, yeah, Chelsea read it earlier this year, for sure. Um, oh, this is... It says, a marvel, something you find amazing. Ordinary, amazing, like potatoes. Love this book. Did the buffering hiccup once in a while? Okay. Yeah, my internet's not good for some reason. I don't know why. I think I have to get a new router. I think it's dying. <laughs> but it says, doo -doo 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 -doo. A marvel, something you find amazing, even extraordinary amazing, like potatoes, because they make french fries happen, like the perfect fries Adam and his mom used to make together. An oddity, whatever gives you pause, like the fact that there are hateful people in the world, like Zainab's teacher who won't stop reminding the class about how bad Muslims are. But um, Zainab, the only Muslim in class, isn't bad. She's angry. When she gets suspended for confronting her teacher, who begins investigating her activist friends, she, was, uh, she retreats to her aunt's house in Doha, K K K is it Qatar? K yes. I always mess up the pronunciation of that. For an early start to spring, day spring break, fueled by the guilt of getting her friend in trouble, she resolves to try out a newer, nicer version of herself. Blah, blah, blah. And then she her path, her path their paths cross. Their paths cross. And he is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, which sucks. I think that I'm going to like this. I think it's going to be lovely. I have read American Psycho. I read it and I wrote a like 20 page long essay on it in relation to another book, which I could not tell you now. But um, I read it and wrote essays about it when I was taking a horror fiction class in university. True story. Heard good things? Just tuning in, your hair is popping? Thanks. You know what? The more that I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it, the less I hate it. So thank you guys. <laughs> also, I put some like stuff in it to make it feel a little better. It doesn't, but it looks, it's starting to look slimmer. It's not, but, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, next book I have here, I've been told not to get. <laughs> but I got it anyway. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. I forgot to show you guys what this looks like underneath. Oh, that was, oh. Okay, this is actually really pretty. So this has like a spine like this. Um, oh yeah, you guys can kind of see that it has like a, 
like a leafy emboss pattern on it. It's very subtle, but it's really pretty under there. Mm, I like it. That eye is so itchy. Okay. Anyway, I was told not to get this book, but I got it. Um, that is Baby Teeth <laughs> by Zoji. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Zoji? Zoji? Hmm. No, that's probably not right. Zoj? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Um, stage. I know that word. And this. Yeah, no. Okay. So this alone. We need to talk about Kevin meets Gone Girl meets The Omen. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so it says, is love born or bred? What is the nature of good and evil? When is a family fit to survive? Suzette is a devoted stay-at-home mother doing everything she can to connect with her seven-year-old daughter who cannot or will not speak. But ever since Hannah was a baby, Suzette couldn't help but feel despised by her, manipulated and scared to death. Alex, Hannah's father, wants to believe that his wife's accounts of Hannah's cruel and unusual behavior, wants to believe his wife's accounts of her cruel and unusual behavior. The only problem is that Alex has never seen it himself. Hannah shows him nothing but love and it's driving Suzette literally crazy. Could it be that Hannah is just a typical naughty girl? Not really, no, ch ch child. I, I mean, I didn't mean to say that. Anytime I read naughty girl, I'm assuming that it's a child. Couldn't she be just a bad kid? One whose everyday antics towards her mother point to intelligence, creativity, and maybe even charm? Or is Hannah, as Suzette fears, actually trying to kill her? A powerhouse, razor sharp novel of psychological suspense, Baby Teeth raises more questions than it answers and will leave you guessing until its shocking conclusion. Uh, okay, for just flipping through, it appears that you actually get from Hannah's perspective. So uh, that's interesting. The creepy child. So this sounds terrifying. Love it. Oh, the color of it is upsetting. Do you see this color? <laughs> you take it out and it's just like like army greeny brown and red kind of upsetting <laughs> so this sounds thrilling I can't wait to read books in 2020 <laughs> can I just go ahead and say that I don't know it's something about starting a um a new year where you're like Fuck all the books I was excited about the previous year. You know, I don't know. <laughs> They're all still there. <laughs> They're right there. And on the floor that I haven't put away. But, you know. Love that. All right, next book. Can we not? Next book we have here is Queenie. Oh, okay. So that book sounds fucked up. <laughs> um, next I grabbed Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. And uh, this cover is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. 2020 is all about reading books on my TBR shelf and not buying any new ones. Good for you. Good for you. I might do that for as long as possible. I might do a no, I might be a, like, I might do a no buy for as long as I can into the new year. That would be something. Because I'll be honest, like I have so many fucking books that like, do I really need to be buying new releases? No. <laughs> I just love this orange cover. It's fantastic. Oh, and it's so beautiful on the inside. All right, it says Bridges. I need water. It says Bridget Jones's diary meets Americana, Americana in this disarmingly honest, bold political, boldly political, and truly inclusive novel that will speak to anyone who has gone looking for love and found something very different in its place. Meet Queenie Junking, journalist, uh, catastrophicist. 
expressive, aggressive, dramatic, loved, lonely, relatable. Her boyfriend has asked for her to leave her leave their apartment. Her boss doesn't seem to see her. Her Jamaican British family doesn't seem to hear her. Her best friends try to help her. The series of men she meets online treat her hideously, and yet she doesn't stop seeing them. Queenie is in a spiral. What makes this breathtaking debut novel so fresh is that it's, this is a spiral mostly of Queenie's own making. The world isn't just happening to her, doing her wrong. Instead, as Queenie careens from one questionable decision to another, she finds herself wondering, um, as we all do these days, what are you doing? Why do you do it? Who do you want to be? Cute. I feel like we all go into a no-buy in the new year, and then that slowly but surely goes away. Yeah, but I mean, if you can try to, you know, try your best, I guess. What do you all do with the unsolicited arcs you receive? No, don't receive them. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't ask for arcs, really. And I mean, I, you know, acquired my arcs from BEA, basically, that I still have stuff that I haven't read. So I feel like I'm so over encumbered by books that um, one, I don't give my address out to barely anybody unless it's like a direct contact with a publishing house. And then um, I don't really ask, I don't really ask for them. So they don't really have the opportunity necessarily to send me additional ones. But um, yeah, I don't know. You can't sell them, but from what I understand, you might be able to, like if you have a local used bookstore, ask them if they will accept them um mine will accept them i think but they won't resell them because mine my local used bookstore is decent i guess um but i asked them i said i have fucking arcs that like i don't know what to do with i typically will wait until after their publication date because then i think that they can actually sell them does that make sense I don't like, I don't, I would never be like, oh, this book is being released next year. Okay. I'm going to try to get, like, give it out into the world. I don't feel like it's, that's my book to give out at that point. Um, but if it's well past after release date, I don't feel so bad. Even though it says on there, please do not resell. Once I have donated it somewhere else, what they do with it, I feel like is out of my hands. Do I only read American authors? No, I try not to. I try to read like a lot of just different people in general. Um, I think the majority of the authors I read are American, um, but I'd like to expand that out and read more from everywhere, really. Um, I like Kayla's idea that she had a little while back of getting one of those scratch off maps and reading a book either set in that country or by an author of that country um and trying to sort of like read the world i like that idea i don't know when i'll do that but i would like to um but yeah this sounds modern and okay i have so many more books to talk about and i am i'm parched from where books from where everywhere except like everywhere that's not like the western norm <laughs> Basically, I would like to read books from or set in, whatever. Um, next book I have here is, uh, yeah. So this is Not the Girls You're Looking For by, this cover is beautiful too, oh my God, by Amina May Safi. And this one is, uh, it says Lulu Say Sayed, or uh, yeah. Doesn't need your advice, thank you very much. She's got three best friends, and nothing can stop her from conquering the known world, or at least uh, her junior year at her Texas prep school. Sure, for half a minute, she thought she nearly drowned a cute guy last at last week's house party, but he was totally faking it. True, she was also a little harsh when she told one of her best friends to stop dating a scumbag. And fine, yes, she caused a scene during Ramadan. It's under control-ish, except maybe this time she'd done a little more damage than she realizes. And if Lulu can't find her way out of this mess soon, she'll have to do more than repair her friendships, family alliances, and wet clothing. She'll have to go looking for herself. Coming of age novel. Beep, 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 beep. Ow. Oh, wow. Stabbing myself right in the eye. Love that. <laughs> um, yeah, sounds cute. Learn languages. It will increase your review of our world. I would love to. Um, I always get asked, like, it's sort of that like tiebreaker question. Like if you could um, 
if you could learn, that's not, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? And I always said that like, instead of flying or like invisibility, I would love the ability to speak and read and converse in any language and be able to understand it. I think that would be one of the coolest abilities um, to be able to fully communicate with every everyone. I think that'd be cool. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I would like to learn a new language. I mean, I really should learn French like and be, you know, declared mostly fluent because it's um in the city that I'm in, it's really good for jobs. Um but it's not necessarily the language that I would like to learn first. <laughs> we may need to go to the kitchen and cook some food for men. My man is in the kitchen cooking food for me right now, so What book would you recommend for someone who is more into genre fiction, i.e. horror fantasy as a gateway to contemporary? Magical realism, maybe. Like something that is set in a contemporary world with a little bit of like flair of something else. Um, try that. Like, yeah. I don't know. I can't think of any one particular book, but I'd say maybe for fantasy, try um, Middle Game by Shauna McGuire, if you haven't read that yet. Like that was, see, it's funny because I like contemporary with a little bit of other stuff. So I feel like I can actually kind of suggest for you whatever that other stuff is that you like. So that's actually not a bad thing. Um, Dig by A.S. King has a little bit of like a one, it's one of the weirder books I've ever read, and I love it. But uh, Middle Game, I would say. The best thing to do with your arcs you want to get rid of is see if your town has little free libraries. Yes. Uh, yes, that's very good. Learning Lingus? Learning Lingus is what I just said. Learning English. English is not an easy language to learn. So, I mean, props, big props for trying your best because it's not easy. What do I think about Harry Potter books? I personally have read two and a half Harry Potter books and I feel like um, because I didn't grow up in the age where it was new or where I feel like it would have suited me better, um, I don't have an appreciation for it like other people do, but I definitely see it and acknowledge it for what it is. My all time favorite book. Currently, my favorite book is um, Sourdough <laughs> by Robin Sloan. Yeah, I have a lot of taste in the weird areas. If you could be asking, middle ground. Yeah. Kisses from Spain. I kiss Spain back. Um, all right, let's continue on with the book haul. Uh, next book I have here, I haven't read yet, which I'm really excited about, which is all of these, but um, that is Obsidio. I read Gemina, but I don't own it. So, like, I own... I don't know where it is. It's up there. Um, I own Illumine. I read and own Illumine. I read, but don't own Gemina. I haven't read but I own Obsidia. <laughs> so it's, I'm looking for Gemini in this cover. So, which is one of the coolest things, I think. So I'm very excited to sort of finish up the series and maybe cry, I don't know. <laughs> that is a sci-fi book about space war, essentially. Currently reading Gemini. Mm, love it. Uh, all right, next book I have here, which I didn't even think was going to come as a as a hardcover. So that's cool. Um, Cabin at the End of the Wood. Nope, Cabin at the End of the World <laughs> by Paul Tremblay. Uh, this is a horror book where I believe it's LGBTQ and. 
they are vacationing in a remote cabin and then apocalypse. I think that's what that is. So I don't want to read too much more. The tough thing about English is the grammar and the facts that words all originate from separate languages. Tell me why tough dough and through <laughs> don't run. <laughs> Seriously. How much money do you spend on books in a month? I have not bought books in four months. Well, maybe about like one or two, but I haven't bought like a lot of books like this in about four months. Um, cause I have so many, you know, like I, so many that I haven't read. I really don't need to be buying books, but I like to, you know, and, um, there's a really good sale on these. So I got each one of these books for basically $5 and free shipping. So I'm not going to argue about it. Um, yeah. In terms of how much I read, I am currently at 98 books for the year. So I'm looking to read 100 books this year. Any more is a bonus, but I try to read 100 books a year. I would like to read more. But yeah, I feel like 100 books a year is probably well above the average. So, um, but yeah, let's see what this looks like. Oh, pretty. Pretty plain, pretty cute. Tiny little writing. As the still was tempered by Ostrovsky. Ostrovsky, if I can pronounce that right. I'm Ukrainian and I can't pronounce that right. Um, my pronunciation is shit for <laughs> any names that isn't boring white names, I'll be honest. I haven't been exposed to it. What's the longest you've spent reading a book? Uh, well, I am listening to the audiobook of It by Stephen King. And I have been slowly, slowly reading that for like three months. <laughs> 98, that's, ow. I hit my elbow weird. Ah. That's amazing. How do you manage it all? I can manage about 67 with... 60 to 70 with a husband and a full-time job. Um, I'll be honest, probably at least 20 of them are books under 150 pages. But then I definitely will be physically reading a book and audiobooks help. I don't know. It just sort of adds up. Like, oh, no, that's fine. Ask me questions. I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, next book I have here is... Uh, one of Kayla's favorites, which is kind of neat. Um, this is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Ellen Hay. This is like a feminist feminist book. It says Jasmine and Chelsea are best friends. This year at their New York City high school, they plan on they plan to rock the theater and poetry clubs until Chelsea realizes that the poetry club is more interested in the classics than poems that matter. And, ja Oops. and Jasmine has uh, an experience that is more drama than theater. Sick over the way their product sick over the way even their progressive school fails to listen to their voices. They start a new club, one dedicated to writing and creating work that supports women's ideas. Because art is never just art, and they know that they can use their art to make a statement to create change. They turn their voices to Write Like a Girl, an online outlet for essays, poems, actions to inspire. But when Jasmine and Chelsea's work goes viral, fans and foes come online and in real life, blah blah blah. Okay. So I can't wait to read that one. Um, I think, like, other than that, like, the longest it's taken me to read a book, like, I read The Stand, which is longer than it. It's, like, 1,400 pages, but I broke it down over 26 days, so. Oh, okay. I thought this one would be different on the inside. Just white and gold. Oh, really? Thought Obsidio was kind of bleh? I'll keep you posted. When I read these, eventually. Who knows when? But eventually. Um, up next. I have so many books here. I have like 12 more to go. <laughs> uh, I use Arctic Fox. 
I use Arctic Fox. And when I say Arctic Fox, I use literally like 27 colors. Ah, got blue on my hand. Ah. It's okay, I got hair dye pants on anyway. <laughs> um, all right, next book. American Road Trip, because I like road trip books. They're one of my favorite books, and I've been meaning to read this forever. It says, a road trip in search of healing. With a strong family and best friend a guy could ask for, a budding romance with the girl of his dreams, life shows a prominent for Theodoro Avila. But he takes some hard hits the summer before senior year, when his nearly perfect brother, Manny, returns from a tour in Iraq with a dev devastating case of PTSD. In a de desperate effort to save Manny from himself and pull their family back together, T's fiery sister, who's, oh, wow, I cannot pronounce this name. Someone tell me phonetically. Someone tell me phonetically how to pronounce that. Because I'm going to butcher that. I have to enter it in and, like, listen to it. I don't have myself. Um... Hood makes your brother into a cathartic road trip. So it's a road trip about love. I don't know, maybe. That's what that one looks like. My hair is meant to look like a sunset. I tried my best. So thank you. Also, look at the color of my skull. Because <laughs> I all I did was wash it out. I didn't actually, like, uh, shampoo it. Oh. all right next book here this one has a sticker on it that's fine um this is starry eyes by jen bennett the woods the stars and the boy who broke her heart i don't know it's boys and camping and contemporary teen romance Chill. Okay, I have to. I'll have to enter it in and listen to it because none of that makes sense. So chill. So chill. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> Thank you, though. Appreciate that. Ooh, purple and gold. Sochi. I could see that. I think it's just the X messes me up and then the TL. I don't know what that's what that is phonetically. All right, I have mm, so many more books. Okay, no. I have four more from Book Outlet. And then five that I bought from Valley Village. Um, but these ones, <laughs> this was like my, my creme de la creme of Book Outlet. Um, for those of you who, those of you know who Mark, what's his name? Mark Z. Dan Lutsky is. He wrote uh, House of Leaves. If you have never seen that book, if you've seen that book, then you know who that is. It's that weird book where everything, you have to like read it backwards in a mirror and it's all fucked up. Um, and it's like a wild time. Well, he has this series. You have it? Haven't got to ready. Okay. He has this series called The Familiar and apparently he is writing 26 of these books. Apparently. I think there's currently five and I don't know if that's, a myth or not that he's writing 26 of them or I don't know but book outlet has look at the size of this book by the way it weighs like three pounds I would say a solid three pounds <laughs> um but this is 
two. I have to buy one, but I figured because Book Outlet was selling them, um, this is two. Like, I'll show you guys. Like, look at, like, what is this? What is, why is it, why, why is this like this? You know, what is this? I don't know. You know, what are these? I don't know. But anyway, so Book Outlet had two, volume two. <laughs> volume three, which, you know, why, why, why is this in there? Why, why is that in there? You know, that's like one word on there. Why? You know? So anyway, uh, Book Outlet had two, three, and four. <laughs> And I figure because these are typically $36 Canadian, uh, that I would buy them all for $5 a piece. So I figured that was a good deal. So I got volume two, three, and four. So I have to buy the first one, <laughs> which I'm not going to complain about. And I'm taking a I'm taking a gamble on these really, but why not? I don't know if these are about like even at all. So I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Maybe I'll look it up. Let's look it up. I have my phone in here. Yeah. Are you enjoying it like you did the stand? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, it is entirely too long. And I like Stephen King and I like the stand. Like, I wish the stand was like 800 fucking more pages. I would sit there and read 2,600 pages of that. No problem. Um, but it is too long. <laughs> Don't. You know... If Goodreads would ever work, that would be sick, you know? Can you imagine a, a world in which Goodreads works? <laughs> I can't. Are we back? Oh my God, God help me. Goodreads broke my stream, I think. <laughs> yeah, the Goodreads search broke my live stream. Love that. Is it back? I think it's back. Okay, well, anyway, I have it open. I'm back, okay. I have it open, because I, I legitimately don't know what this series is about. So it says, from the author of international bestseller, House of Leaves, a national book award, the familiar volume one ranges from Mexico to Southeast Asia, from Venice, from Venice, Italy, to Venice, California, with nine lives hanging in the balance, each called upon to make a terrifying choice. They include a therapist in training, grappling with daughters as demanding as her patients, an ambitious East LA gang member contracted for violence, two sciences, two scientists in Marfa, Texas, on the run from an organization powerful beyond imagining plus a recovering addict in Singapore summoned at midnight by a desperate billionaire and a programmer near Silicon, Silicon Beach whose game engine might unleash consequences, conse I can't read, consequences far exceeding the entertainment he intends. Okay. Um, at the very heart, though, is a 12-year-old girl named Xanther whose one rainy day in May sets out with her father to get a dog, only to end up saving to save a creature as fragile as it is dangerous which will change not only her life, but the lives of those she has yet to encounter. But this world too, or at least the world we know, 
what? She has, yeah. <laughs> but this world too, or at least the world we think we know and the future we take for granted. Huh? <laughs> What? What does it mean? Okay, it seems to me, <laughs> yeah, it seems to me like there's nine main characters in like the familiars and then I guess as the story progresses, more and more comes out. But as you know, it's it's told in typical Mark fashion in like fucking weird ass shit. Yeah. Video series on the 26 book series. Well, I mean, there's only one to five right now, right? So I don't know. It says the familiar five books. Is he, is he writing more? Like, I need to know. When was the last one published? Excuse me, it says number five is the season one finale. Well, is there more? I thought there was supposed to be like 26. Yeah, fucking liar. Whatever, I'll accept it. Oh, okay, so apparently the five books out so, out so far are the first season, and there's up to five seasons planned, but currently on an indefinite hiatus. Well, that's frustrating, but I'm going to read them anyway. So this one is, is interesting. So it says, volume one is wherein the cat is found. Volume two is wherein the cat is hungry. Volume three is wherein the cat is blind. Volume four is wherein the cat is toothless. And volume five is wherein the cat is named. I'll forget that. So if that was a fucking spoiler, like, big deal. I mean, I'll forget that two days from now. <laughs> um, anyway, the last book that I hauled from Book Outlet is Unstoppable Moses by Tyler James Smith. And I got this because of the cover and I liked it. So it says, Moses Hill and cousin Charlie were best friends, wisecracking pranksters, unstoppable forces of teenage energy until the night they became accidental arsonists and set an emotion of chain events that left Moses alone, grief, guilt stricken and most slightly most likely trapped in his dead end town. Then Moses get a lucky break, the chance to volunteer as a camp, camp I can't speak, camp counselor for a week and prove the fire incident at the bowling alley he should should be expunged from his record. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Small town. Cute. I like a lot of small town vibes. Does it glow in the dark? I'm a, probably. It definitely seems like it would. And then lastly, I have five books that I bought from Value Village. First one being Hoynes by Joe Hill, because I don't actually own this book. I definitely have watched the movie many times. Um, I have met Joe Hill. He was lovely. And he kind of looks so much like his dad in that picture. Like a little bit. Um, then I got The Deep by Nick Cutter, which is this annoying, uh, whatever size this is. I hate it. Kind of garbage, but, um, yeah. This is a strange plague called the get is decimating humanity on a global scale. It causes people to forget small things at first, like where they left their keys, and then not so small things like how to drive or letters of the alphabet. Their bodies forget how to function involuntarily. There's no cure. Yikes. Um, but far below the surface of the Pacific, which is a word that I cannot normally say, 
ocean, a universal healer hailed as ambrosia has been discovered. In order to study this phenomenon, a special research lab has been built eight miles under the sea's surface. When the station goes incommunicado, Sure. Um, a brave few descend through, through the lightless fathoms in hopes of unraveling the mysteries lurking at those crushing depths, depths and perhaps to encounter an evil blacker than anyone could possibly imagine. So this gives me very strong um, into the deep, into the drowning deep vibes. And I like how it says, save your last breath to scream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, mash train paperbacks. It's kind of shitty, but the reason why I got this is because um, I might take this to Hawaii. And it's like an easy size as I drop it. It's an easy size to pack, you know, like it's easy to kind of slip around. So I figured um, while I'm staring at the ocean, I might as well save my last breath to scream. <laughs> All right, next book I have is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid because I have not read this one. So. So this one, it says, at the age of 29, 29, Hannah Martin has no idea what she wants to do with her life. She has lived, six, lived in six different cities and have held countless meaningless jobs since college. Blah, 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 blah. She bumps into her high school boyfriend, Ethan. Blah, blah. Ethan offers quickly to give her a ride later and if she wants to stay. Hannah hesitates. What happens then? In concurrent storylines, Hannah lives out the effect of each decision. Far reaching, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's basically she finds out what happens if she goes with Ethan or not. Cool. Oh, uh, we should see what this looks like. Hold on. Ah, uh, just green. Then I got Beauty of the Moment which is stunning. Have you seen this cover? It's gorgeous. Yeah, I love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I read that a long time ago. All right, so this is Susan Thomas is the new girl at school. She's smart, driven, and strive for, for perfection. Her Indian family has just moved from Saudi Arabia to Canada, and according to her parents, her future will be set once she becomes a doctor or engineer. Mm, excuse me. But Susan has a secret. She wants to be an artist instead. Malcolm Vakil is the bad boy. He started raising hell at age 15 after his mom died of cancer, boo, and has had a reputation ever since. He doesn't care about connecting with his dad or getting to know his stepmom. Um, unlike his other Zoroastrian Zorost friends, he doesn't even know what he wants for his own future until he meets Susan. Love is messy, families are messier, but in spite of their burdens, Susan and Malcolm fall for each other. The ways they drift apart and come back together are testaments to family, culture, and being true to who you are. Cute. And set in Canada, which I can appreciate. And then the last one here is The Right Swipe, which I believe is a romance about swiping right. And that is by Alicia Rye, who, as far as I know, writes romance. So that's all I got. Those are all the books. So many books. Let me know any of those books. And would you read them? Which book should I read first? That's the question. The, oops, the right swipe was so good. That's good. But yeah, is any of those 31 books up your alley? What should I start with? The last one? Wow, I can't get it. Do I look like an absolute douche nozzle in these? Will they fit on your shelf? No. <laughs> Will I make them fit on my shelf? Yes. 
First of all, I can't see colors properly in these sunglasses. She looks like a douche. <laughs> Baby teeth. Oh, that's the look. Mm. <laughs> like an 80s carnival ride operator. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is my general vibe <laughs> and aesthetic. I go, um, yeah, Hunter S. Thompson. That's literally what I was going to say. I'm like, my style is Hunter S. Thompson meets the 80s in general. I don't know my style. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I'm practical in my style, but I definitely am drawn to Hunter S. Thompson vibes um, for like my vintage clothing finds. <laughs> Baby teeth, so I know if it's worth it. I don't know. I'll, I'm not going to be reading any books probably in the next five days. Like, let's be honest. I'll probably finish it. And then I'm going to be busy packing and like stressing the fuck out about my life before I re re fly out. But um, <laughs> I'll probably, it'd be, it'll be a good one to, to start to read in the new year for sure. Start with Queenie. Okay. I'll probably make a poll on Twitter of like my, uh, my like top four picks or something. How is your, ex my experience with reading it is that it is far too long. It is too long. And because I have, I've read it before, like I've read it twice now. I read it when I was in my early twenties and I don't remember it being this fucking long, like honestly, truly. And then um, <laughs> I read it when I was a teenager and it also didn't seem that long. But I think it's because I watched the old movie, I watched two of the new movies, like both of the new movies, and then I started reading the book all within like a month. I feel like it was too much of it. And like, I just, at this point, I'm like, you know, I w I'm fine. I am oversaturated with content. Oh, I'm listening to the audiobook. But like, if I have to listen to, um, what is it? Hi ho silver away one more fucking time. I'm going to scream. So, <laughs> you know, like, like, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I'm definitely noticing changes and the differences more. Like, obviously the book is about 10 times more racist, like, and it's horrifying to listen to. Like, it's bad. Um, and it's not pleasant. And like, yeah, there's obvious differences, but like, I'll be honest, <laughs> beep, beep, Richie. Yeah, there's so much beep, beep. No, it's literally the audio voice, like the audio narrator going, hi ho, silver, away. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm on the bus. And I'm like, it's so shrill. <laughs> I fucking hate it. And then it's like Henry Bowers just like being a racist piece of shit. <laughs> like, and his dad being a fucking Reese's piece of shit and it's just like uh it's just it's rough and so I'm almost done like I literally will probably finish it tonight tomorrow like whatever I'll just pop it in but um I'm giving it a three like it has been a solid <laughs> hi it's been a solid three stars through like it has it never really peaked and it never really, I mean, I guess it got a little worse, but like, it's just a fine book. It's fine. But like, do I want to finish it? No, not particularly. Yeah, I really want to read 112263 um, for like the, the, for the more political side of it, for sure. But after I finish it, I get to read Misery, thank God, because I just need, like, a short Stephen King in a genre that I like. So, yeah, I've watched all the movies. I've watched the old movie, the new movies, um, and then, I, like I said, I started reading the book, all of it, within a month. And it has now taken me three, almost four months 
to finish listening to it. And it's just like, I, can't, I hate it. Yeah, I've watched the movie for Misery, but I've never read the book. I thought I read it when I was a kid. And then I just like, I'm looking back. I'm like, I don't think I did. Started going on through King's List. Yeah, I think it's because I know like the cultural significance of misery that I think in my mind, I thought I had read it, but I don't think I had. All right, so I don't think that I did. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go in about 10 minutes because I'm hungry. And my throat hurts from being on here. But yeah, those are all the books I got. This is my hair. Is it perfect? No. Actually, I really can't wait to curl it. I think curling it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm taking the Unhoneymooners. Misery. And... Um, sure. I'll get right on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the Unhoneymooners, Misery, and then also that other Stephen King book that I didn't finish, probably. I might take, like, four books. I don't know if I'll read them all, but also because I'm taking a lot of shit with me, so I don't know how much shit I'm going to get to. Look at this part. Look at this part of my hair. What's going on here? What if I like braid it? Oh, <laughs> my head is so stained. I need someone else to braid my hair. You know what I mean? I was like, I hate doing it. This is why I can't braid hair well. No shit, they say. <laughs> Cute. Ah, get off. Oh yeah, it looks fucking awesome. I just can't braid hair for shit. Like I really wanted. Okay, my one coworker has the most amazing hair you've ever seen. Like honestly, truly, it's incredible. Like, she's so much hair, it's like, like, she takes an elastic band and just puts it over her hair. And, like, that's all of her hair. Like, she she can't even twist it twice. And, like, she braids her hair into these, like, two fucking things and then does all the time. And I'm like, how? <laughs> like, how are you, how are you the way that you are? <laughs> like... but yeah I don't know how to do that like I can do what can I do nothing apparently I used to be able to do little like twisty doodads lots of practice yeah obviously like she's so good at it but like anyway pretend pretend that's pretend that's braided no nah, that doesn't look that good I don't know whatever <laughs> but like Jeff can tie knots can he braid my hair for me <laughs> is my question <laughs> I need somebody to braid it like I want it I want it braided in like two like two things back like this or something Wow, I look like a, it's so wild because like I put it up and I look like a different person.
How does that look? Not that great. <laughs> but then my ponytail looks fire. Hold on. Oh. <gasps> space buns? Do I know how to do space buns? I have no actual um, hair ties in this room, and I know I don't because I put them all in my bathroom like two seconds ago. But see, here's the thing. I don't typically like having space buns one because i suck at doing my fucking hair two because i suck at doing my fucking hair <laughs> i have like a clip so like picture that for like a second Oh, it's cute though. But like, also, how did I just do that? I don't know how to fucking do space bonds. I don't know how to do hair. I don't know how to dye hair. I don't know how to do hair. Whatever, pretend this was good. And then I can never make them even. Like, see? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I don't hate it. I mean, that, that one looks like shit, but like. I literally, I literally don't have. Oh, I bet you that looks. I like having the little orange pop like right there. You know, so pretend pretend that stayed there and didn't look like absolute garbage. I'll play around with it, but like I don't normally like high up and like up and down styles. Does that make sense? I like either all my hair to be up or all my hair to be down. That's fun though. If I can figure out how to do that and how not look like shit, <laughs> then I'll uh, I'll give it my best, you know. Oh, bobby pins. Maybe I have bobby pins somewhere. No, probably not. <laughs> anyway, I am gonna go eat some food. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, as I mentioned, I will probably not be uploading. Uh, for the rest of the month so stick around i'm gonna be here i may or may not do a live show on the beaches of hawaii so um depending on whether or not i have wi-fi <laughs> i might oh i will enjoy the food i'm going to enjoy the beaches i'm going to enjoy Letting my pale ass fucking flubber just like get some sun. Oh, it's gonna be great. Love it. I'm gonna shake my belly like a bowl full of fucking jelly. Mm, wonderful. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. Um, hopefully, everyone has a happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, holidays, whatever the fuck you're doing. Who cares? I hate Christmas, so, like, you know, whatever. But uh, hopefully, you just have a good day. Do something for yourself that day. And uh, yeah, uh, read some books. All right, that's it. Love you guys. Bye. You'll see me before next year, I'm sure. But <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Bye.